Get that man's face in your uh, mind right there, okay? Get it uh, 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 cemented in there. That's the man right there. When I was a boy, hardly a week went by, but what he didn't say to me, when I was your age, I used to get up at 4 in the morning, walk 12 miles to school, uphill, both ways, through the snow, barefoot, no, 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 naked. Many mornings I was naked, long lines of naked children going to school, so cool. I used to say to my friends, tell me the truth, did your moms and dads have to walk many miles to school? And they all had the same response. <laughs> Except one of my friends who said, no, my dad only used to have to go about nine. But he used to have to raft part of it. <laughs> that was my dad. If I said to him, boy, dad, whew, cold out there this morning, my dad would say, you have no idea what cold is. When I was a kid, used to get so cold, I, I, I kept getting my lips and tongue stuck on that old metal cowbell. <laughs> you kept getting them stuck, Dad? <laughs> you did it more than once. That's my dad. If I said to him, boy, oh, I twisted that ankle. Oh, man, <clears throat> there's some pain. My dad would say, you have no idea what pain is. When I was a kid, pain really hurt. <laughs> Walk it off. That was my dad's solution to any injury. Walk it off. Bloody nose. Well, walk it off. <laughs> Diarrhea. Walk it off. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Dad. I think it's working. <laughs> I actually had appendicitis. My dad told me to walk it up. Now, I cut my dad a little slack here, okay? He's not a medical doctor. He didn't know that I had appendicitis. I didn't know that I had it even, but I did. And when I woke up at 3 a.m., my dad was about three feet away going, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. If I had known it was appendicitis, I never would have told you to walk it up. I'm so sorry. I thought it was a gallstone or a twisted bowel. I didn't know <laughs> My dad, you say it was so tough when he was a kid. Oh, it was so tough. You have no idea. Oh, I'll tell you something. Uh, it was tough then. I'm sure maybe it was a little tougher for my dad than it was for me. But I'll tell you, it was tough enough. It was dangerous enough when I was a kid. I'm sure of this. When I think about family trips, oh, my goodness. My sister and I, we would be fighting in the back seat of the car. Now, listen, I understand all children through all ages have fought in the back seats of cars. I get that, okay? But the, but, but the difference between kids these days and my big sister and me when we fought in the back seat, we'd be standing up back there. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would say, hey, 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 you want me to come back there? I thought that was a fascinating idea. <laughs> sure, Dad, come on back. This is your driving. <laughs> All right, Bobby, that's it. Time out. Up in the back window. He would send me to the back window for a time out. Turn around, I don't even want you looking this way. So I'd be laying up there in the back window. <laughs> little solar heat coming in, remember that. Oh look, there's a farmer on a combine chasing us. Passing us on this swervy road. And he's drinking, you know. <laughs> just praying we wouldn't have to swerve for deer because there were deer everywhere. Listen, I know there are deer in South Dakota. I get that. In Minnesota, where I live, I get that. But you, have, you cannot imagine North Central Pennsylvania. Honest. You, you, I, you, I, you just, I was like 10 before I realized that deer were living creatures. <laughs> I just thought the highway department dragged them out there every morning to slow us down the way to school. <laughs> I hit a deer right in my town. Right in my town, I hit a deer. Destroyed my bike. It was dangerous back then. Here, listen to this. Children, um, uh, uh, there are some here, right? Well, there's a couple. There's some others. Are there any other kids? Or just, yeah, there we go. When, when I was a kid, we had packs of roving dogs in my town. They didn't even belong to anybody. Think, think about this. You know this is true. These days, every dog's got a collar with a license, with a leash, with an owner, with a plastic bag walking behind it. <laughs> Not back then. Packs of dogs, and they ran in Vs like this. 
And there were no little dogs in these V's because all the little ones had been eaten by the big ones. <laughs> and their whole purpose was just to terrorize little children. It was so frightening. I remember I was 10 years old. I'm out in the driveway. I'm out there shooting baskets by myself, minding my own business. 10 years old, shooting baskets. Just pretending, really, because, well, we didn't have a hoop. <laughs> I heard this rrr, 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 turn around, pack of dogs coming right after me. And I screamed. And I ran to the screen door and slammed it, but a little bit too late because one of the dogs had his paw stuck in the, in the door. It was the one-eyed dog. And I couldn't let go because they were trying to get in. I was screaming. And my dad said, what's the racket down there? I said, oh, dad, these mean dogs. He said, you have no idea what mean dogs are. <laughs> when I was a kid, every dog had rabies. I have so much fun at my dad's expense. Uh, I want you to know my dad actually is, he's a real, uh, he is a gentleman. And uh, if he were here tonight, um, he'd be sitting out, well, he'd be sleeping. But <laughs> I would tell these very stories and he would find them mildly amusing. I mean, <laughs> the point is, and I think it's kind of neat for an old guy, my dad gets it. My dad understands my profession. He really gets it. My dad understands that I'm just using him to make money. <laughs> Got a call from my mom a few years back. She said, your dad's had a terrible accident. Just briefly, my dad had climbed up in an apple tree, um, 18 feet up in an apple tree. Old man. And he was picking apples up there and throwing them to my teenage cousin on the ground. And my teenage cousin was catching the apples and putting them in an apple basket. And my dad figured out if he could pick the apples, a bunch of them, and throw them quicker than my cousin could catch them and put them, then he could repeatedly hit my cousin, <laughs> which he was really enjoying. And they got laughing. Well, my dad was. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbed a rotten limb. It snapped off. He went backwards off a branch, 18 feet, old man. Fortunately, he was an old paratrooper, too. He managed to land on his side, but he shattered his pelvis. They had, us, had him in surgery for four hours, screwing him back together. My mom finally got a hold of me. I said, can I talk to him? She said, yeah, I think so. Hey, I want to tell you something, folks. I love my mom and my dad. I'm a kid who has always loved his mom and his dad. And never a moment in my life have I questioned if my mom and dad loved me. I always knew how much they loved me. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. What a heritage. But having said that, I would also tell you this. My dad and I didn't say those three words, I love you. Uh, hardly ever. And I've wondered why this is, because I always said those words to my boys and, 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 and they to their children, and now I to their children, my grandkids. And now my dad and I, we talk a couple times a week. We never end a conversation, never end a conversation without saying, I love you, Dad, or I love you, son. But all those years growing up, we didn't say those three words. I said, can I talk to him? She said, yeah, I think so. And then I heard him say, hi, Bob. Two syllables. And I heard the pain in my dad's voice. I had never before heard pain in my dad's voice. I said, Dad, I'm, I am so sorry. He said, well, thanks, son. I said, I heard you were up pretty high. He said, you have no idea how high <laughs> I was. I thought he was going to tell me about how his skin was heating up as he came through the atmosphere back down to earth. I said, Dad, I wish there was something I could say to make you feel better. He said, well, thanks, Bob. And then I realized, hey, folks, life is short, isn't it? And I said those three words, so long overdue. I said, Dad, walk it up. <laughs> Which got him laughing pretty good, by the way. <laughs> and apparently, it really hurts to laugh with a crotch full of screws. But listen, 
story would not have to have ended that way. I might have said, I love you, Dad. And I know if I had, I know he would have said, well, you have no idea how much I love you.